Presenting the transcription feature, Superman. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Yes, it's Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, who can leap tall buildings at a single bound, race a speeding bullet to its target, bend steel in his bare hands, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. But before we join Superman, listen. And now to our story. With the guilt for the murder of Comanche Joe definitely pinned on Cheney and Lawson, and his own troubles straightened out, Tumbleweed Jones relaxes and becomes his old self. The easygoing, lovable cowhand that Clark Kent and Jimmy Olsen had become so fond of on their last trip to the West. To amuse Jimmy, Tumbleweed took them out to his archery range to teach them the art of shooting a bow and arrow. Kent, much to Tumbleweed's amazement, shot a long bow no man had yet been able to draw. But the arrow missed the target and buried itself deep in a gopher hole under a jutting rock. When Jimmy ran to retrieve it, he found something else in the hole. A silver arrow, beaten by hand from a flat piece of precious metal, and on which was engraved a puzzling verse. Listen. Jimmy, please show me exactly where you found this silver arrow, will you? Right here, Mr. Kent. When I stooped down to pull the arrow out of this hole, my hand touched something cold. Was it lying loose right in the hole? No, it was kind of half under that rock. Uh-huh. I reckon that gopher must have uncovered it a mite when he dug himself in there. Gosh, how long do you suppose it's been there? I don't know. It's dated 1855. No, wait a minute. It's 1885. That's almost 60 years ago. Well, that's about the time silver mining was whooping things up around these here parts. <laughs> they tell stories about them times that it raised hair on a bald eagle. Say, read that to me again, Mr. Kent. Must mean something. All right. I shot this arrow into the air. It will fall to earth, I know not where. If he who finds it has no fear, he'll search the stream neath the galloping steer. Now, what do you think the galloping steer is? That's what makes the riddle, Jimmy. Is there anything around here known as the galloping steer, Tumbleweed? Well, let's see. Galloping steer. Uh, galloping steer. No, no, I, I don't recollect nothing by that handle. Oh, maybe it's a place where they drive cattle. No good cattleman gallops his steers, Jim, and makes them scrawny. Well, think hard, Tumbleweed. Do you remember ever hearing about an an old inn or tavern in this part of the country known as the Galloping Steer? No. No, not in my recollection. Oh, Boy, this sure is a riddle. Search the stream neath the Galloping Steer. Hmm. Well, maybe we'd better start with the stream. That seems to be the key to the puzzle. Oh, look, Mr. Kent. Yeah? Back home, Jackie Kelk, he's that skinny kid I pal around with. Well, we cooked up a kind of a secret code using a bunch of words and giving them different meanings. Maybe that's what this is, code. No, I don't think so, Jimmy. What, for instance, would galloping steer mean in your code? Oh, now, let me think. Galloping steer. Tumbleweed, are hamburgers made out of steer meat? Why, sure, Jim. Best things you ever had. Well, that's it, then. To Jackie and me, galloping steer would mean hamburgers. <laughs> hamburgers? <laughs> Jimmy, how do you make that out? It's way over my head. Why, it's simple. Steer meat, as Tumbleweed said, is what hamburgers are made of. And when you eat too many of them, you get a galloping bellyache. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you and Jackie better patent that coat, Jim. <laughs> uh, say, it just occurred to me, Tumbleweed, isn't there an old native around here who might know something about a place called the Galloping Steer that existed in the 1800s? The knows there is, Mr. Kent. Unless it might be Hopeful Jake. Folks out this way just calls him Hopeful, but... He's been around these parts a long time. Well, maybe he's the one to see. Well, why do they call him Hopeful Jake, Tumbleweed? Well, I reckon it's account of he's been panning for gold in Red Pebble Creek for nigh on to 45 years. Ain't nobody never found no gold in these parts, but Hopeful, he keeps right on panning and hoping. Well, can we have a talk with him? We'll see why not. We'll ride over to Red Pebble. He'll be there. Don't mind that sore shoulder, Jim, getting into the saddle. Oh, be careful. <laughs> Everybody all set? I'm ready. Okay, follow me. Yep, yep. Hello, Tumbleweed. I don't recollect no place brown as galloping the stair. Ain't never been such place around here. Well, do you remember any... Hey, uh, what you say? You gotta yell at him, Mr. Kent. He don't hear nothing unless he ain't supposed to hear. Now, that ain't right, Tumbleweed. You know it. 
Uh, what was it you was going to ask me, partner? I just wondered if you knew of any landmark, a uh, rock formation, or cliff, or anything that might have been called galloping steer. Nope, nope, I don't. Uh, what do you want to know for? Well, we found a silver arrow. Just a minute, Jimmy. Did you say silver arrow, yearling? Why, uh, yes, yes. Do you know anything about a silver arrow? Let me see it. We are just letting you see it, hopeful. Now keep it. Quiet your tongue, tell me. We don't you know no better respect for your elders? No. Where at this silver arrow? Here it is. You know anything about it? Yep. Yep. That's genuine. Nobody else could have made it like that. What's it on about, hopeful? Partners. This here silver air was made by the hand of one of the greatest and finest men ever to draw breath. What was his name? And no hombre living ever knew. Folks called him the Silver Air. Gosh, a western desperado, I'll bet. No, no, he weren't none of that. He was a plague to bad men. A guardian of law and order. Do you know him, Hopeful? Nope, I told you nobody never knew him. Nobody never learned who he was. But uh, he saved my life once, he did. Could you tell us something about him? Well, uh, all I can tell you is what I recollect about my own experience. That was about 50 years ago when I was a young'un. I was manager of the stagecoach office up to Hangman's Gulf when it was a booming with silver mining, when nobody ever dreamed it'd turn into a ghost town like it is today. You say it's a ghost town? Yeah, yeah. Plum deserted. Everybody pulled stakes once the silver vein petered down to nothing. Well, one night I I was counting my days with seats and making ready some silver shippings going east when the door opened. Rich, what is sky, hombre? Why, who? What do you want? Never mind the palabra. Rich, pronto. You're wasting your time. I ain't got much air. We'll see you once I get rid of your gun. All right. Hand over them cartwheels. There ain't much. Only about $100. Quick. Hand them over. The pouches, too. I can't give you them pouches. They don't belong to me. That silver going east. Hand them over. Well, here they are. Yeah. Now, being smart fella, stay where you are. Don't move a muscle. For five minutes, you get plug full of lead. And if I'll let you get away with it... Stay where you are, I shoot. Shoot and be hanged. I'm a coming. Oh. Well, well, I'll be a local steer. What made him keel over? Dead. Dead in the doorknob. With a silver air in his back. Sure as I'm a sitting here. Yep. There was his silver air sticking right out of his back. That was his mark, and... There was no mistaking, I'm here to tell you. If the silver air hadn't got him just then, that bandit's bullets would have finished me, sure. Oh, did he always return loot taken from bandits he killed? No, no, he, he built up a tremendous fortune from robbing the rich bandits. But he used a lot of it to help the poor. Gosh, sort of a western Robin Hood. Oh, hopeful, uh, did you say that happened over a dead man's gulch? Yep. Yep, that's where it was. Well, why don't we go over and have a look around there? Oh, can we? I'd like to see a ghost town. Nothing much to see, Jim. Yeah, you better not go near Dead Man's Gulch. Why do you say that, Hopeful? Oh, teen's healthy. Prowling around ghost towns. Oh, sir, let them lay. Teen's healthy. The chances are we wouldn't find nothing. Well, you can't tell. Let's go, Mr. Kent. Yeah, I think we will. I'm just as curious as Jim to have a look at a deserted western mining town. Uh, partners? I'm a warning you, don't you go there. Give up a searching for the silver air's meaning. Won't lead to no good. I know, and I'm a warning you. Have you told us all you know? Can't tell you no more. I'm just a warning you to stay away from Dead Man's Gulf. Ghost towns ain't healthy. Shall we leave, Tumbleweed? Uh, much obliged for the information, Hopeful. Drop around to my ranch sometime. Now, look here, Tumbleweed. Steer clear of Dead Man's Gulch. It ain't healthy. Don't you worry about us. We're not afraid of ghost towns, are we, Jimmy? Oh, of course not. Let's go. Okay. He's seeing you, hopeful. Steady, boys. Steady. Yeah, I warned you, Tumbleweed. Ready, Mr. Kent? Uh -huh. Jimmy? All set. Get up, boy. Get up. Get up. Get up. 
be the sheriff's office. Over yonder is a saloon and dance hall. This was a pretty wild town in this day. It isn't wild anymore. Nothing but cobwebs and dust. Gives me the creeps. Well, let's dismount and have a look around. Whoa there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, whoa. See anything resembling a galloping steer, Jimmy? Well, last year, a lot of tumble-down shacks. <laughs> no self-respecting steer galloping or not would be found dead in this place. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Reckon he is. Just looking at all this dust makes me thirsty. I don't suppose there's any water in this ghost town, is there, Tumbleweed? Well, I recollect seeing a spring the other side of the sheriff's office. Uh, I'll take a look. Meet us in back, Jimmy. Okay. Well, Tumbleweed, where do we start? I don't know, Mr. Kent. That there silver arrow hombre left something hid in this town. It's... Gonna take a heap of looking to find it. Uh, supposing we go. Uh... What was that? I don't know. Come from over where Jimmy went. It sounded like a human voice. Follow me, Tumbleweed. Was it Jimmy whose shrill scream suddenly broke the death like silence of Dead Man's Gulch? Or is the ghost town inhabited? Mystery and adventure loom ahead, so don't fail to tune in on the next episode. Follow the story with Superman. Don't forget, tune in again for the next thrilling episode with Superman. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman. It's a plane. It's Superman. Yes, it's Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, who can leap tall buildings at a single bound, race a speeding bullet to its target, then steal in his bare hands, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. But before we join Superman, listen. And now to our story. Ignoring the warning of the old prospector, Hopeful Jake, to steer clear of Dead Man's Gulch, a deserted ghost town, Kent, Tumbleweed, and Jimmy went there in search of a clue to the puzzling verse engraved on an old silver arrow Jimmy had found. Hopeful Jake had told them of a legendary Western Robin Hood known only as the Silver Arrow, who hunted down bandits and shot silver arrows into their backs. At Dead Man's Gulch, Jimmy went to look for water. Suddenly, a piercing scream broke the death-like silence of the ghost town. Kent and Tumbleweed raced to Jimmy's rescue, only to find him pale and transfixed. He had seen a figure darting between the dust-laden skeletons of the town shacks. When he called out, it stopped for a moment, screamed, and vanished into the shadows. A thorough search of the deserted shacks revealed no sign of man or beast. Puzzled, Kent and Tumbleweed rested for a moment on the steps of what had once been the sheriff's office. Listen. You say you saw whatever scream, Jimmy? What did it look like? Oh, I couldn't tell. The sun was in my eyes. It was just a blur. Might have been a coyote. No coyote ever screamed like that. It was a human voice. Jimmy, are you sure you didn't scream? Me? How could I? My tongue was stuck to the roof of my mouth. That's where it is now. If I don't get some water soon, I don't know what I'll do. And Tumbleweed found a stream back of the sheriff's office. Come on, we can all stand a drink. I've never been so thirsty in all my life. Well, take it easy, Jim boy. Don't gulp it down unless you're looking for a bellyache. There's the stream. Oh, boy, lead me to it. Don't drink fast, Jimmy. Oh, is that good? Well, you rest a while. Go ahead, Tumbleweed. Yeah, nice, clear water. Can I have a little more, Mr. Kent? Well, just a little. Okay. All right, now that's enough. I feel like a new person. There's nothing like... Mr. Kent. Oh, great Scott, what's the matter? You scared me out of a year's growth. Look at this rock at the edge of the stream. Look at the top of it. What in town, nation? Top is carved in the shape of a galloping steer. Jimmy, you're right. Well, I'll be hog-tied and thrown. You reckon that's the galloping steer that Silver Arrow wrote about in his poem, Mr. Kent? Could very well be. The verse said, Search in the stream neath the galloping steer. Well, this is the stream, and there's the galloping steer. Yep, that's correct. And maybe the answer to the puzzle is under this rock. Well, we'll see in just a minute. I'll lift it. Well, hold on a minute, Miss Kent. You better let me give you a hand. That rock looks mighty heavy for one armor. Oh, no, I can... Oh, <laughs> all right, Tumbleweed, thanks. Grab a hold of that end. I'll take it here. Okay. I got it. All right. Now stand back, Jimmy. All right, now heave. There we go. Yeah, she's over. 
Yes, and look what's under it. Another silver arrow. Just like the first one. Well, I'll be dog. Is there writing on this one, too? Now, wait till I wipe the tarnish off. Is that Mr. Kent? Wait a minute. Gosh, more goose pimples. Hey, that's Cena. Yes, there is. Yes, sir, there's another verse on this one. And it's even more puzzling than the other. Boy, oh boy, this is getting exciting. What does it say? It says, In a cave by the hill where rest the dead, you'll find my mate in the seventh head. Oh, that's a rip snorter. We ain't never going to be able to figure that one out. Gosh, in the cave where rest the dead. Where would that be? Yeah, I haven't the faintest idea, Jimmy. But it's got to be around here someplace. Let's try to figure this thing out step by step. Here. Well, how can you do that? Hmm? The Kansan poem don't even make no sense. Now, wait, Tumbleweed, wait. It's, it's got to make sense. Now, think hard. You know of any place in this vicinity that might fit the description? Mr. Kent, I was fold, raised, and saddle-busted beneath your parts. And I ain't never heard of no graveyard staked out in a cave. Oh, I tell you, that poem is like a polecat drug across a trail to throw you off the scent. Gosh, I hope not. No, I'm certain this message means something. Let's see now. In a cave by the hill where I rest the dead. And Tumbleweed, do you know of any place around here that might be called a cave in which anybody has ever found bones? I mean, not necessarily human bones, any kind. You mean bones of animals? Yes, even coyotes or buzzards, any kind. Let me think now. Sure, I reckon I do know about some bones. Uh, buffalo bones. Well, where are they, Tumbleweed? Are they in a cave? Come to think of it, they was found in a cave over by them hills yonder. You mean right there in back of the town, where the silver was mined? Yep. I could shoot an arrow right smack dab into it from here. Tumbleweed, how did those buffalo bones get into the cave? Well, the story goes that a big herd of buffalo run into the cave to get out of a blizzard that last across this country once about a uh, hundred years ago. What happened to them? Was the cave sealed by the storm? Might just as well have been. That storm blew and blew for nigh on to a whole month. When it was all over, them buffalo had died a lack of fodder. And the bones were never taken out? Nope. I reckon nobody had no use for them in the first place. And then uh, it was talk that kept folks away uh, that appeared to go in there. They still are, for a fact. What kind of talk? Well, I, I don't rightly know, Mr. Kent. I I didn't put no stock in them stories. Uh, something about queer sounds that used to come out of there. Queer sounds? What sort of sounds? Like as if somebody was uh, moving around in there. Uh, and some folks said it's how they heard pounding. Like a man was beating out horseshoes. Golly. Do you think... I think it's a lot of nonsense. Just stories made up by local pranksters. Perhaps by somebody who had a reason for keeping people out of there. Well, maybe so. I reckon you're right. Anyhow, I think we ought to be hitting a trail for the ranch if we want to make it before sundown. Shadows are beginning to get a mite longer now. Let's just walk over and look. If we find the arrow mentioned in this verse, we'll take it along and puzzle it out at home. If we don't, well, there's nothing lost and... We'll come back out here tomorrow morning to take up where we left off. Sure, let's do that, Tumbleweed. Well, I don't know. You're not scared, are you, Tumbleweed? Oh, now, Jim, you know better than to say old Tumbleweed's afraid of anything. That is, <laughs> leastwise, not while I have my bow and arrows with me. Oh, I was just fooling honest. Of course he was, Tumbleweed. You know that. Well, come on. It's getting dark. Okay. We won't stay any longer than it takes to find out if it's the right case. And pick up the arrow, mate. Huh? Miss Mosey, then. As Ken, Tumbleweed, and Jimmy start for the cave, a pair of beady eyes watches their progress closely. Hiding in the ever-lengthening shadows that mark the gathering dusk, a figure darts from one deserted, broken-down building to another, keeping close behind the two men and their young companion. Beyond the edge of the town, the figure moves from sagebush to rock, taking advantage of any cover. As the three approach the mouth of the cave, Jimmy stops short. I tell you, Mr. Kent... I feel like somebody's following us. Oh, nonsense, Jimmy. Well, guess because this here is called a ghost town, Jim. Ain't no reason for you to get them kind of feelings. It's only called that because ain't nobody lives here in these buildings. Ain't been nobody here for nigh on to 40 years. I know that, and honest, I don't feel creepy or scared, but since I heard that scream... Of course, I understand. Now let's read the message on this second hour before we go into the cave so we'll know what we're looking for. I know. You'll find my mate in the seventh head, the mate to that arrow. That's right, Jimmy. He's got a good memory. Lucky he has, because it's getting too dark for reading now, and he's got us no flashlight. So let's get this over Prano and get on back to the ranch for some chow. Well, we'll be on our way soon. Come on, let's go in. Gosh, dark as pitch in here. I sure could use a flashlight now. Yes, I could. Here, wait, I'll strike a match. Mr. Kent. Look back there. Hmm? Those eyes. Well, it's an animal of some kind. Wait till I put an arrow to my boat. Coming closer. 
Hold it, Tumbleweed. Don't shoot. The match has gone out. Light another one quick, Mr. Kent. Moved up closer. Let me shoot it before it jumps us. Mr. Kent. Stand back. I'm going to let fly. No, Tumbleweed. Wait a minute. What for? Why don't you let... Oh, wait. I'll show you. Here, Kitty. Kitty. Why, that must be a... Sounds like a cat. That's exactly what it is, Jimmy. <laughs> Just a harmless kitty. Oh, gosh. Sure had me scared for a minute. Mr. Kent, that match is burning your fingers. Huh? Oh, I must have forgotten it. Here, I'll light another one. Well, there's your buffler bones on the floor over yonder. They're scary and light. Look at those skulls. Yeah, a dozen of them lined up. Let's see. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's the seventh head over there. Jimmy, tumbleweed, we were right. This is the cave. The arrow of the axe? Sure is. Here, duplicate of the other two. Say, hey, Mr. Kent, it's just as dark outside as it is in here. We'd better mosey on back. Golly, I can't wait to see what this arrow says. Well, while you're looking, you two, I'll mosey over and get the horses and Jimmy's pony. I'll take the kitten with me. Wait, Tumbleweed. We'll need you to get the answer to this riddle. Well, what do you mean? Just a minute. I'll light another match and read it to you. What's it say? Here it is. Pace seven to the south, then face the east. Shoot this arrow where the sun shines least. Sounds just like one of those old-fashioned riddles. Yeah, it does. Seems easier to figure than the others. All we have to do is follow the directions and then shoot this arrow where the sun shines least. It's a cinch. The sun ain't shining no place now. Yeah, you're right. Well, we'll have to come back and try it tomorrow. I can hardly wait. Well, you'll just have to wait, Jim. Look, in the use of all of us uh, walking back for the horses, you and Jim sit here and I'll go get them. Oh, that sounds good to me because I'm pretty tired. Okay, Tumbleweed. We'll accept your offer. Meanwhile, we can explore this cave a little more. It's my last match. You're right, back. Oh, there goes that match. I like the last one. Well, Mr. Kent, hmm? will you promise not to laugh at me if I tell you something? Why, certainly, Jimmy. What is it? Are you frightened? Don't be afraid to admit fear. That's the best way to lick it. No, it's not that exactly. It's just that I've still got that funny feeling. Yeah. Jimmy, that sounds like trouble with you. Come on. Mr. Kent, what's that? Jimmy, stand back! Mr. Kent, where are you? What's happened? I'm right here, Jimmy. There's a landslide. The entrance to the cave will be blocked up. Then we can't get out. We can't. Jimmy! Will Clark Kent be forced to reveal his true identity to Jimmy Olsen in order to save his young friend's life? What was the strange meaning of Tumbleweed's scream for help a moment before the avalanche of falling earth and rocks imprisoned Kent and Jimmy in the cave of the buffalo bones? Are these two incidents somehow tied up with a slinking figure that followed our three friends on their way to the cave? Don't miss a single episode of this thrilling story. Tune in and listen with Superman. Don't forget, tune in again for the next thrilling episode with Superman. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman! Look! Up in the sky! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Yes, it's Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, who can leap tall buildings at a single bound, race a speeding bullet to its target, then steal in his bare hands, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. But before we join Superman, listen. And now to our story. Following the mysterious trail of the Silver Arrows, Clark Kent... Jimmy Olsen and Tumbleweed Jones entered a cave near the ghost town of Dead Man's Gulch and found the third arrow hidden in a bleached buffalo skull. Like the two they had found previously, it was engraved with a rhymed riddle. Since darkness had fallen, Tumbleweed suggested returning to the ranch and went for the horses, leaving Kent and Jimmy in the cave. A moment later, however... But wait. Listen. Gee, Mr. Kent, I certainly hope Tumbleweed... Jimmy, that sounds like tumbleweed. Come on. Mr. King, what was that? Jimmy, stand back. Oh, here, let me get me. Let me get Jimmy. Mr. King, what happened? Where are you? Have 
right here, Jimmy. There's been a landslide. The entrance has been blocked. What? And we can't get out. We're trapped. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Oh, golly. What are we going to do? Take it easy, Jimmy. Take it easy. We'll, we'll get out. But how can we if the entrance is blocked? And what about Tumbleweed? Why did he yell for help? Oh, wait, one thing at a time, Jimmy. That cry of Tumbleweed may have just been a warning to us. I wish I was sure of that. No. Wishing isn't enough. We've got to find out. Let's see. You stay right where you are, Jimmy. Mr. Ken, where are you going? I'm just going up ahead to have a look at the entrance. Well, can I go with you? No, you might bump your sore shoulder in the dark. You stay right there. I'll be within earshot. Okay, but please keep on talking to me. It's so dark in here. There's all these buffalo bones around me. All right, Jim. This is a job for Superman. And that puts me in a spot. What'd you say, Mr. Ken? Uh, nothing, Jimmy. I was just mumbling to myself. Oh. What does it look like up there, Mr. Ken? I'll have to fool Jimmy and make it look easy. Why, not too bad, Jim. What do you mean? Well, there are a couple of small rocks here. I think I can move. You mean you can make an opening big enough for us to get through? I think so, Jimmy. You just sit tight now. Well, here goes. As Superman, get this boulder first. There. Sure you don't want me to help you? No, sir. You stay where you are. Okay. There. Now these. Something must have happened out there to make Tumbleweed yell for help the way he did. Yeah. Not much more to go now. Got to make it fast. Just a few more of these big rocks. There we are. Through. Mr. Kent, uh, I just felt a rush of cold air. That's right, Jimmy. There's an opening now. We can get through. Come on. But be careful. Right. How did you do it? Well, it wasn't too difficult. Never mind that. We've got to find out what's happened to Tumbleweed. All right, get down low. I'll scramble through. Okay. Easy. There you go. I know. Good. Here I come. There we are. Golly. What do you suppose has happened to him? I don't know, Jimmy. Tumbleweed! Tumbleweed! What was that? Just an echo. Let's go up to where we left the horses. Mr. Kent, could someone be living in Dead Man's Gulch? Well, Tumbleweed said it's deserted. So did Hopeful Jake, that old prospector. Yes, I know, but I wonder... Why? Well, too many queer things have been happening. That scream I heard, and then Tumbleweed's cry for help, and Jimmy. then... Wait. What is it? Shh, quiet. I thought I heard something. Wait a minute. No. No, it was just the wind. What were you saying, Jim? Oh, well, I was saying that queer things have been happening. Well, I know this is supposed to be a ghost town, but... Oh, we'll find Tumbleweed. Don't you worry. Look. What? Over there to the right. Where? Mr. Kent, isn't that a big hole in the ground? Oh, yes. Yeah, it looks like it might be the opening to a mine shaft. Let's have a look, Jim. Yep, that's what it is, all right. Yes, and I'll bet you were thinking the same thing I was. I guess so, Jimmy. But Tumbleweed's not down there. Well, try shouting for him again, Mr. Kent. Okay. Tumbleweed! Tumbleweed! Not even an echo this time. No. Tumbleweed! Tumbleweed! Gosh, what can we do now? Well, there's only one thing to do. Search those broken down shacks up ahead there. How about you? Do you feel like running? Sure, let's go. Okay. Well, here we are at the sheriff's office. Can you keep your eyes and ears open, Jimmy. I don't mind telling you, Mr. Kent. I'm plenty worried. Yeah. My heart's right down in my shoes. I feel the same way, Jimmy. Gosh, this place really looks like a ghost town in the moonlight. Uh-huh. Wait a minute. I'm sure I heard something that time. Listen. I don't hear anything but the wind. Wait. Tumbleweed! Tumbleweed! Echoes enough to give anyone the creep. Shh, quiet. Do you hear that? It's coming from that building over there. Follow me. I still don't hear it. I heard it that time. Someone's in this building. Now look, Jimmy. You keep close behind me and be very careful because it's dark in there and the floorboards may be rotted. Hang on to me if you can and stop when I tell you to. You understand? Yes. Okay. I'll open the door. Let's go. 
Sounds like it's coming from the back. And see, there's a door to some kind of a back room there. Yes. Watch that hole in the floor. Watch it. It's Tumbleweed. Yes, thank heaven. We're coming, Tumbleweed. Here's the door. Oh, it's locked. Stand back, Jimmy. I'll have to break it down. Be careful, Mr. Kent. I will. There we are. Tumbleweed, where are you? Oh, there, Mr. Kent, in the far corner. Yes, I see him. Come on. All right, Jim. Help me untie him, will you? I'll take this gag off his mouth. You untie his legs, will you? Okay. Careful, though. Ah. Get this knot open here. Ah. There it comes. There we are. Ah. Tumbleweed. Well, what happened to you? Phew. Oh, thanks, partner. Oh, sure is good to chap my jaws again. I was just beginning to get a mite cramped. There. Your legs are untied. Okay. Wait a minute now. Get your arms. Gee, Tumbleweed. There. I'm glad we found you. Well, no gladder than what I am, Jimmy. I sure am much obliged to both of you. Reckon a few more hours of this would have made me stiffer and a pair of Sunday go to meet and shoes. Who tied you up like this, Tumbleweed? What made you cry for help? We were coming out of the cave to see what had happened to you, and all of a sudden an avalanche closed up the entrance. Reckon he must have done that, too. Who, Tumbleweed? Why, the same hombre what laid me out cold. Who was it? I don't know. Now, wait. Suppose you start from the beginning and tell us exactly what happened. Well, when I left you to, to fetch the horses, yeah. I didn't get more than 50 paces from the cave when, quick as a buck and bronc, some hombre reared up back of me. I seed him out of the corner of my eye. But before I had a chance to do more than let out a yelp, I felt like a mountain come down in my head. Jeepers. You didn't even get a chance to see who it was. No, sir. Went out like a candle in a storm. Well, when I come to, here I was. All roped up like a calf, ready for burning. Well, was the man who did it in the room when you came to? No, didn't see hide nor hair of him. Gee whiz, it's lucky Mr. Kent heard you. Yeah. I reckon it is. I heard you hollering for me. I thought I did. And then I started letting out my vocal cords as much as I could with that uh, gag muffling me up. Gee, we had no idea what happened to you. Well, I think we'd better start back to the ranch. Not till I find the ornery hombre what left me with this headache. But it's pitch dark, Tumbleweed. Yes, Jimmy's right. You can't go prowling around here at night, certainly. Now, we'll we'll come back in the morning and take up the trail of the silver arrows where we left off, huh? Well, maybe you're right, Mr. Kent. Yeah, it's time we had some chow anyway. Boy, that reminds me. I sure am hungry. <laughs> so am I. Oh, say, incidentally, Tumbleweed, you hmm? know the solution of the riddle on the third silver arrow depends on you. That right? Mm-hmm. Rick and I wasn't listening when you read it last time. What's it say? Well, well let me tell it. him, Mr. Kent. Huh? I think I remember it. It said, pay seven to the south, then face the east. Shoot this arrow where the sun shines least. Is that right? Correct, Jimmy. You got a gold star for the... What's that? Why, that's the same thumping I heard before. What do you mean? It went on for about ten minutes after I come to. Oh? And stopped just before you busted in here. I forgot to tell you about it. Golly, maybe it's the bird who tied you up. Let's find out. Come on. Here's the stairs. Follow me. Okay. Careful, Jim. Them steps ain't strong. Stop. Yes, that's funny. Sure is queer. Might be a critter thumping his tail. Well, we'll see. There. It started again. Uh-huh. Here's the head of the stairs. And there's the room the sound's coming from. Be careful now. Don't take no unnecessary chances, Mr. Kate. We ain't got no guns, you know. I know. Don't you worry about me. I found a candle and some matches downstairs. Want me to light it? No. Not yet, Jim. Ah, here's the door. I'll try it. Donation. That thumping stopped again. Never mind that. The door's not locked. You two stand back out of the way, flat against the wall. I'm going to open the door. What will Clark Kent find in the second floor room of the ghost town shack? Who or what is responsible for the weird thumping? The mystery of the Silver Arrow seems to be deepening, so don't fail to tune in again and follow each thrilling adventure with Superman. Don't forget, tune in again for the next thrilling episode with Superman. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman.
Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman! Look! Up in the sky! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Yes, it's Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, who can leap tall buildings at a single bound, race a speeding bullet to its target, then steal in his bare hands, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. But before we join Superman, listen. And now to our story. When Tumbleweed Jones left the cave of the buffalo bones to fetch the horses, he was attacked from behind and knocked unconscious. A moment later, an avalanche of rocks and earth blocked the entrance to the cave, imprisoning Clark Kent and Jimmy Olsen. But Kent, taking advantage of the absolute darkness to assume his true role of Superman, cleared an exit from the cave and, with Jimmy, started off in search of Tumbleweed. In Dead Man's Gulch, the ghost town near the cave, they heard muffled cries and found Tumbleweed bound and gagged behind a locked door in one of the deserted houses. Freeing him, they were about to start back to the ranch when they heard a strange something coming from the room above them. As quietly as possible, they crept up the creaky old stairs. Shh. Be as quiet as you can. I'm trying. These steps are so creaky. Be careful you don't go through, Jim. Them boards is pretty rotten. Ah, here's the top of the stairs. Now, let's see. Something is coming from that room on the right. Stop. Shh, quiet. There it goes again. Yeah. It's just like it was before. When I was tied up downstairs, starting and stopping every couple of minutes. Look, Tumbleweed. You and Jimmy stand against this wall. I'll try the door. Ain't that a mite risky? Don't worry. I'll be careful. It isn't locked. Golly. It stopped again. You two stay where you are. I'm going to try something. Ain't no telling what's in there, Mr. Kent. We'll soon find out. Here goes. Come out with your hands up. We've got you covered. I said come out. We've got you covered. Don't appear to be nobody in there. Oh, yes, there is. I picked up a piece of candle and some matches downstairs. Want me to light it? Yes, Jim. Light it and give it to me, will you? Here you are. Okay, thanks. Now, let's look over in that chair. It's a boy. Well, yep, all tied up like I was. Quick, help me untie him. Gosh, gag almost covers his whole face. I'll take it off. There. What? Why, that ain't no boy. Tumbleweed's right. That's a girl. All right, instead of just talking about her, let's give her a hand. She's fainted, so the first thing to do is get her out of that chair. Right you are, Mr. Kent. Got to get her head down so the blood will get back to her. That's right. Here, give me a hand. We can stretch her out here on the floor. And Jimmy. Yes, sir? Rub her wrists. Whip up the circulation, will you? Okay, Mr. Kent. That's it. All right, now. Here, Tumbleweed. Ease her down. Yep. Easy does it. Easy. There we are. Poor little girl. She's as white as a sheep. Oh, she probably fainted from fright when we opened that door and barged in. Wait a minute, Mr. Kent. What? Here's her hat lying on the floor. And... Well, just look at it. What is it, Jimmy? Look what she was wearing, stuck through the hat. A silver arrow. Well, well I'll be hog-tied. Let me see that, Jimmy. Yes, sir, it's just like the three we've got. Hand-hammered out of a flat piece of silver with... With something faintly engraved on it. No kidding, Mr. Kent. Well, what's it say? Uh-oh. Wait a minute, Jim. You need to come, too. Oh, what, what happened? Oh, let me let me out of here. Easy now, miss. Easy. Don't be alarmed. We're your friends. No, don't touch me, please. We're not going to hurt you. We're friends. We found you tied to the chair. Now, just you relax. Thanks. What are you doing here? Well, it's a long story, miss. We were downstairs when we heard you thumping. Yeah, that's how we happened to find you. Gosh, if we'd known there was a girl tied up here, we wouldn't have wasted so much time sneaking around. That's right. Your pounding on the floor had us kind of worried for a spell. Well, we had no idea what it could be. And a lot of things have happened to us today in this ghost town. Lots of things have happened to me, too. But I'm grateful to all of you for finding me here and releasing me. 
My name's Mary Lewis. Oh, mine's Clark Kent. I'm a reporter for the Metropolis Daily Planet. This is Jimmy Olsen, our copy boy, and this is Tumbleweed Jones. Howdy, ma'am. Sure am pleased to meet you. So am I, Miss Lewis. You've no idea how happy I am to meet all of you. You certainly arrived at the psychological moment. Well, thank you, Miss Lewis. I'm glad we were able to help you. Please call me Mary. Oh, all right, we will. Now, Mary, do you want to tell us how you came to be tied up in this deserted house? Well, to begin with, I, I arrived in Lost Valley late this afternoon. Oh, by train? Yes. I rode out here right after I checked in at the hotel and changed my clothes. Uh-huh. Well, uh, along about nightfall, I, I was poking around in these old buildings looking for something. And suddenly I heard footsteps coming up behind me, but I couldn't see anyone. It scared me nearly out of my wits, so I let out a scream and ran into a cellar. Well, that must have been the scream we heard. Like the scared Jimmy here night of death. Yeah. It must have been Jimmy that frightened you. Oh, gee whiz. I wasn't really scared. Uh, well, we won't go into that. Well, I admit I was. I stayed crouched in that cellar for over an hour. It was dark as pitch. Then suddenly I heard a grinding sound, like rocks rubbing together. Then I had a strange feeling that someone else was in the cellar with me. And when I looked around, I, I could just make out a tall, crouched figure. Golly, who was it? Don't interrupt you, Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. I wanted to scream, but I couldn't. My voice was paralyzed with fright. I stood there watching that figure come closer and closer. And then suddenly everything began to swim before me and... Then you fainted? Oh, no. Oh, first I, I heard a deep voice say, I know what you've come for. What everybody else wants. But you will never live to find it. Oh? And everybody, everything went black. And when I came to, I was tied up here where you found me. I realized I couldn't cry out with my mouth gagged, so I tapped my heel on the floor. But I guess I fainted again before you arrived. Hmm. Huh. I don't suppose you'd be able to identify the man in the cellar. Oh, no, Mr. Kent. It was so dark I couldn't see him. Mm -hmm. But I think I'd recognize his voice if I heard it again. I, uh, I was wondering, ma'am, what brings a pretty stranger like you to this old ghost town, Dead Man's Ghost? I came out here to look for something. Well, what could you possibly hope to find in this deserted town? I'm sorry, Mr. Kent, but I don't think I can tell you. Oh, Mr. Kent, why don't you ask Miss Lewis about that silver arrow? What? Oh, oh, yes, yes. Where did you get that silver arrow you wear on your hat? What? Well, that's just an ornament. Are you sure that's all it is? Of course. Why do you ask? Well, because we have three of them. Three silver arrows exactly like the one on your hat. Look. Oh. You see? They're mates. Same size, same weight, same hand hammering. And say, Mr. Kent, hmm? you forgot to read the engraving on that arrow of hers. Well, you're right, Jimmy. Here, let me... What's it say, Mr. Kent? Ah, very interesting. Well, what's it say? I shot an arrow into the air, it will fall to earth, I know not where. Why, say that... If he who finds it has no fear, he'll search in the stream neath the galloping steer. Why, that's the same as the first arrow we found. Yes, Jimmy, exactly the same. Well, I'll be... Where did you get those arrows? We just found them, ma'am. We had lots of trouble figuring out where they were located, too. It was like a treasure hunt. Like a treasure hunt? Yes, you see, we found the first one accidentally. The verse on it led us to the second, and there was a verse on that one, too, which led to the third. And the third one? Where does that lead to? Uh, we don't know yet. No, you see, we just found that tonight in a cave where Jimmy and I were trapped. And I was clunked on the head and tied up in this building. Mm -hmm. And that brings us right back to you and your silver arrow. Uh, will you tell us where you got it? Oh, I suppose I should. Especially since it's obvious to me now that we're both looking for the same thing. Well, you mean you're on the trail of the silver arrows, too? Yes. That is, I'm searching for what the silver arrow leads to. I never knew there was more than one. Well, so far, we have three, and yours makes four. There may be others. But suppose you start from the beginning. Uh, forgive me for buttoning in, Mr. Kent. Huh? But this sounds like it might be a long and interesting story, which will take time to tell. Why don't we hightail it back to the ranch, get some hot fodder under our belts, and be in the right frame of mind to listen? Oh, golly. I almost forgot about not having any supper. Well, I think it's very thoughtful of you, Tumbleweed. Mary must be hungry, and so are we. I guess your story will keep until we get back to Tumbleweed's ranch, will well, it? Sure it will. But really, I don't think I should impose on all of you anymore. I can go back to the hotel now, and... Now, ma'am, I won't have none of that. Tumbleweed's ranch is always open to whoever ain't too proud to be my guest. Just you make up your mind you ain't going back to no hotel tonight. Sure. It'll give Tumbleweed a chance to make some use of that fancy guest room in his ranch house. It's too nice for Mr. Kent and me. Well, if you're sure I'm not intruding... Of course not, Mary. Tumbleweed's invitation is sincere, believe me. And, uh, 
He's a wonderful host, too. No, I ain't neither, but I'll do my best to see that you're comfortable. You don't know how much that means to me because, well, I I dreaded spending a night alone in that hard little hotel after this ordeal I went through today. Sure, sure, we understand. Well, let's not waste any more time. It'll take us an hour to get back to the ranch. Okay, let's move it. Hope Cookie's kept some food hot for us. Don't you worry none about that, Jim. He'll have something. What was that? Look, over there in the wall. Another silver arrow. Sir, it's a silver arrow, all right. Just like ours. And it's got a note attached to it. Jim, bring that candle closer, will you, so I can read it? Uh Uh-huh. That's it. Quick, what does it say? Wait a minute. It says, Leave now and don't never come back. Give up looking for more silver arrows or you'll be finding them in your backs. Well, one thing is certain. The ghost town of Dead Man's Gulch is hiding someone who is very much alive. Someone who knows more about the mystery of the silver arrows than our friends. What is the mystery? And what part does Mary Lewis play in it? Don't fail to hear the next episode. Tune in and follow the story with Superman. Don't forget, tune in again for the next thrilling episode with Superman. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman! Look! Up in the sky! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Yes, it's Superman! Strange visitor from the planet Krypton who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, who can leap tall buildings at a single bound, race a speeding bullet to its target, bend steel in his bare hands, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. But before we join Superman, listen. And now to our story. When Jimmy Olsen found a silver arrow buried on Tumbleweed Jones Ranch, things began to happen. The arrow was engraved with a riddle in rhyme. If he who finds it has no fear, he'll search the stream neath the galloping steer. In the deserted ghost town of Dead Man's Gulch, Kent, Jimmy, and Tumbleweed found the second arrow, which in turn led to a third. Having learned from an old prospector known as Hopeful Jake that a legendary character called the Silver Arrow once roamed Lost Valley, Kent is certain the carefully hidden arrows with their mysterious rhymes must lead to something important. But evidently, others have the same idea. Some very active ghosts have suddenly come to life in Dead Man's Gulch. First, Kent and Jimmy were almost trapped in a cave by a man-made landslide. Then, Tumbleweed was struck from behind and left roped and gagged in one of the ghost town's deserted shacks. To cap everything, a mysterious tapping led our friends to the second floor of the shack where they found a young girl bound to a chair. Strangely enough, she was wearing as a hat ornament A duplicate of the three silver arrows. As we pick up our story, we find Kent about to question her regarding it. Listen. Now, this silver arrow, Mary, do you mind telling us where you got it? Not at all, mister. What was that? Look, over there on the wall. I'll be a bobtailed coyote. It's another silver arrow. Come through the window. Is it Mr. Kent? Yes. There's a note attached to it. A note? Gosh. Oh, what does it say? We'll see in a minute. Ah. Hold that candle up, Jimmy. Yeah. That's it. Well? Oh, wait a minute, Jimmy. It's written in pencil and it's a little hard to decipher. The handwriting is childish. Come a little closer with the candle, yeah? Yeah, That's better. Maybe I can read it, Mr. Kent. I teach kindergarten back east and I'm accustomed to children's writing. Oh, you probably can. Here. Oh, no child ever wrote this. It's the handwriting of an old man. Oh, can you read it? I, I think so. Now, now, let's see. Leave now and don't never come back. Give up looking for more silver arrows or you'll be finding them in your back. Gosh. Yeah, I don't suppose it's signed. No, no, that's all it says. Leave now and don't never come back. 
Give up looking for more silver arrows or you'll be finding them in your back. What does it mean? You three wait here. I'm going out to look for whoever sent us this pleasant little note. I'm going with you. I think you'd better stay behind, Tumbleweed, and keep an eye on Jimmy and Miss Lewis. Well, nobody has to keep an eye on me. I can take care of myself. Look. What? It's a cat out the window. It's a man. Heading for the hill. Stand back. Stand back. I'll get that man with my bow and arrow. Hurry, Tumbleweed. Here goes. Did you get him? If I did, I just winged him. He's running like a local steer. I'll catch him. Oh, hold on, Mr. Kent. I'm coming with you. You and Mary wait downstairs for us, Jimmy. Okay, Mr. Kent. Can you see the steps, Miss Lewis? This candle doesn't give much light. Be careful. I will. You better let me hold your arm. Easy now. One at a time and feel your way. Some of the boards are pretty rotten. There. Now we're all right. Who do you think shot that arrow through the window, Jimmy? Gosh, I don't know. A lot of funny things have been happening around here. Things that are pretty tough to explain unless you believe in ghosts. Dead Man's Gulch is supposed to be a ghost town, you know. That simply means it's deserted, Jimmy. Well, for a deserted town, it certainly has plenty of activity. You know, I still don't understand how you had nerve enough to come out here alone. You never did tell us what brought you to Dead Man's Gulch. Well, it's a long story, Jimmy. You said you were looking for something. Has it anything to do with that silver arrow you're wearing on your hat? Yes. Where did you get that silver arrow, Miss Lewis? I'd feel much more comfortable if you'd call me Mary instead of Miss Lewis. Gosh, I, I would if I didn't know you were a school teacher. Kindergarten teacher. Don't let that frighten you, Jimmy. Okay. Well, where did you get that silver arrow, Miss... Uh, Mary? My grandfather sent it to my mother many years ago. I was searching through an old trunk recently and found it with a faded letter that Grandfather Cummings had written. It mentioned the silver arrow. It said to guard it closely because it had great value. Oh, did your grandfather used to live out here? Yes, my mother was born in Lost Valley. But she doesn't remember her father at all. Her mother brought her east when she was only an infant. Didn't your grandfather go with them? No. Seems he was a western bad man, Jimmy. A cattle rustler. And his wife, my grandmother, left him and went east with my mother. Oh. They never saw him again. And the only time they ever heard from him was when he sent the silver arrow. Gosh. Was he a real western bad man? Did he hold up stagecoaches and things like that? <laughs> I imagine so. Golly. Well, why did he send your mother the silver arrow? Well, that's what brought me out here. When I found the arrow in the trunk and, and read the rhymed inscription on it, I realized that Grandfather Cummings must have had some reason for sending it. I guess you're right. Because the three silver arrows we found must lead to something. See, I wonder what happened to Mr. Kent and Tumbleweed. Think we ought to go out and look for him? Mr. Kent said to wait here. All right. This candle is getting smaller and smaller. I'd hate to be stuck here without any light. It's bad enough. Jimmy. What's the matter? I felt a cold draft. So did I. The candle's flickering. Someone's opening a door. Who's there? Jimmy, the candle. It's out. Have you got any matches? No, tumble we took them. Someone's coming toward us. Where are you, Jim? Right here. Hold my hand. Don't be afraid. Can't we get out of here? I don't know which way to turn in the dark. I think I'd better yell for Mr. Ken. Mr. Ken! Mr. Ken! Jimmy! Someone's got me. Yell for who? Help! Mr. Ken! Help! Help! Help. Stop going! Mr. Ken! Mr. Ken! I'm coming! Jimmy, where are you? Jimmy! I'm all right. He knocked me down. Hey, Scott, what happened? Why is it pitch dark in here? The candle blew up. Someone attacked Jimmy. What? I'll strike a match. There. Jimmy, are you hurt? No, I just got the breath knocked out of me. You scared him off, Mr. Ken. Scared who off? Someone opened the back door and the draft blew the candle out. Are you sure it wasn't the wind? Oh, no. We heard footsteps and the floorboards creak. And the wind doesn't wear whiskers either. What are you talking about? Look. Oh, wait, the match went out. I'll light another. There. Where's that piece of candle you had, Jimmy? I guess I dropped it. There it is on the floor. Oh. I'll light it and set it on the table. It's better than striking matches continually. There we are. Now, what were you saying about whiskers, Jimmy? I've got a handful of them. What? White whiskers. Look. Well, where on earth? Whoever jumped on me in the dark had a long white beard. Leaping lizards, Mr. Kent. I'll bet a dollar to a donut it was... What's his name? Who? Oh, you know, that old prospector. Hopeful Jake. No, no, no. It, it, it couldn't have been. Well, how do you know? He had a long white beard, and 
And he was the only one who wanted us to stay away from Dead Man's Gulch. Oh, I know. Oh, I'm sure it was hopeful, Jake, Mr. Kent. I tell you, it couldn't have been, Jimmy. You'll see why in a moment. Here comes Tumbleweed now. Hey, you ornery, low-down, spindle-shanked coyote. I got a mind to run you so full of arrows, you won't be good for nothing but probate. Get inside there before I lose my temper. Get Why, it's hopeful, Jake. You ain't got no call to treat an old man this way, Tumbleweed. All I done was play a little joke on you. We don't take a hanker into them kind of jokes, you spavin' old wheeze box. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do you see why the bearded man who attacked you couldn't have been hopeful, Jake, Jimmy? Wait a minute. I'm not quite sure. Hey, let go of my beard. Oh, you're right, Mr. Kent. It's a different beard. What's going on here? Why, someone attacked Jimmy and Mary while we were chasing hopeful. Jimmy wrestled with whoever it was and managed to pull a handful of hair out of his beard. Why, you mean to say there's another loco bearded hombre loose in the gulch? Ah, that's what it looks like. I told you, I warned you it ain't safe to go messing around in no ghost town. Nobody is asking you for no opinion. If it ain't safe for us, it ain't safe for you, neither. Is this the man who shot the silver arrow under the window? Yes. He says it was a practical joke just to scare us. Don't put no stock in that, man. Hopeful Jake ain't spoke the truth for as long back as I can remember. Uh, you got no call to say a thing like that, Tumbleweed. <laughs> It ain't right and it ain't decent. I'm an old man. Yes, but not too old to wander around in the darkness playing what you call practical jokes on people. Now, are you going to tell us why you've been trying to keep us away from Dead Man's Gulch, or do we have to turn you over to the sheriff? We ain't turning him over to no sheriff, Mr. Kent. If and he don't talk, and talk mighty quick, we're going to string him up. Huh? Ah, maybe you're right, Tumbleweed. That would be the easiest way. No, no, you, you, you can't do that. It's against the law. The law won't have no part of this. We'll just heist you up and let the buzzards pick your skinny carcass clean. Get the rope off of my saddle, Mr. Kenton. Uh, I'll talk, I'll talk. I'll, I'll tell you everything I know. It ain't much, but I, I'll tell you. Go ahead. Just one thing I want to know, Hopeful. Why did you try to keep us out of Dead Man's Gulch? Because there's something here that belongs to me. Something I've been hunting for 30 years, and I aim to find it before I die. Evidently, you're not the only one who's looking for it. Someone else in this town, the white bearded man who wrestled with Jimmy. Do you know who it is? Reckon I do. Oh? I've been nursing and feeding him for a long time, trying to get him to think straight. Trying to get him to tell me where he buried it. Buried what? I don't know, but I reckon it's silver. Pounds and pounds of silver. Well, who is this man? What's his name? You heard what Mr. Kent said, hopeful. <laughs> What's his name? His name? Well, it's. Oh! Catch him, Mr. Kent. Okay, I got him. Mr. Kent, what happened? He's been shot in the back. What? With a silver arrow. Silenced by a silver arrow knifing out of the darkness, hopeful Jake slumps into Clark Kent's arms just as he's about to reveal the secret of Dead Man's Gulch. Has the silver arrow silenced the old prospector forever? The story is rushing to an exciting climax, so don't forget to be with us for the next revealing episode. Tune in and listen with Superman. Don't forget, tune in again for the next thrilling episode with Superman. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Yes, it's Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, who can leap tall buildings at a single bound, race a speeding bullet to its target, bend steel in his bare hands, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never-ending battle for truth. And justice. But before we join Superman, listen. And now to our story. The mystery of the Silver Arrows is fast drawing to a close. When Clark Kent and Tumbleweed Jones captured the old prospector, Hopeful Jake, they learned why he had been trying to scare them away from the ghost town of Dead Man's Gulch. Eerie shadows danced on the dust-laden walls of the ghost town shack as Hopeful began his rambling story. Suddenly, a silver arrow whizzed out of the darkness and struck him in the back. 
As our story continues today, Jimmy, Tumbleweed, and Mary Lewis are seated in the parlor of Tumbleweed's ranch house, while Clark Kent and the doctor are in the adjoining bedroom with a seriously injured old man. Listen. 10.30. They've been in there a long time. You reckon old Hopeful's done for? I don't know, Tumbleweed. That silver arrow was sharp. I don't generally ask for much, Jim, but I'd give plenty to get my hands on the ornery, low-down, sneaking son of a mangy coyote who shot that arrow into old Hopeful's back. I'd give him a taste of arrows he wouldn't be likely to forget. You changed your tune, Mr. Jones. Back at Dead Man's Gulch, you were ready to string that poor old man up on the nearest tree. Oh, Tumbleweed didn't mean that, Mary. Well, he wouldn't hurt a fly, let alone an old fellow like Hopeful Jake. Hold on, Jim. I can draw my own bow. In the first place, ma'am, nobody calls me Mr. Jones around these here parts. The name's Tumbleweed, and that's the whole of it. No mister and no nothing. In the second place, Jimmy here had a bead on the target. I wouldn't string nobody up, even it meant losing both arms and a leg. But old Hopeful didn't know that. Leastways, he didn't stop to think much about it. Tumbleweed just wanted him to talk. That's why he threatened him. Well, he talked, and you see what happened. Yeah, if I could have put my hand in front of that there silver arrow and stopped it, ma'am, I'd have done it. I'll keep a close watch, Doctor. I can't tell you how much I appreciate your getting down here as fast as you did. I'm glad I was able to, Mr. Kent. Well, good night, Tumbleweed. Good night, everyone. Good night, Doc. Good night. Good night. Much bye. Well, what's it going to be, Mr. Kent? A tough battle for Hopeful, Tumbleweed. That arrow went deep. He's not a young man, you know. But Dr. Mallory thinks he has a chance. I hope he pulls through. Oh, so do we all, Jimmy. For more reasons than one. Well, why don't you turn in, Mary? You look tired. Oh, I'm all right. Well, I think it might be a good idea if we all turned in. I'm going to sleep right here on the sofa. Oh, no, you ain't. Well, I have to, Tumbleweed. Dr. Mallory said to stay close by Hopeful in case he comes out of his coma. If anybody's going to bunk on that there horsehair sofa, it's me. Why? For the plain and simple reason that you need a good night's rest. And that old lumpy sofa ain't fit for a man of beast to flop on. Oh, I think you're being very silly, Tumbleweed. I don't mind at all. Well, I do. And since these here are my diggings, I reckon i got to speak the right to speak my piece. I'm sleeping on the sofa, and you and Jim is going over to the bunkhouse. Well. The lady's got a room all fixed upstairs. <laughs> hey, you see, it pays to be a lady, Mary. You don't have to sleep on the sofa or in the bunkhouse. You're fancy. <laughs> Ain't nothing fancy about it. I could probably sleep on iron spikes tonight. <laughs> if it's that bad, good night. We'll see you in the morning. Which room is mine, Tumbleweed? Right up the head of the stairs. I'll take you up. Oh, no, don't bother. I'll find it. Good night. Good, Good night, night, Mary. Good night, Mary. Don't forget to wake me. If you don't, I'll sleep right into next week. No, I'll see that you're awake and bright and early. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night. You know, uh, I can't rightly figure her out. She kind of puzzles me. Oh, I think she's swell. You'd never believe she was a school teacher, would you? Why not? The school teachers grow horns and breathe fire. Oh, you know what I mean. <laughs> All I know is that you made a silly, unthinking remark. What puzzled you, Tumbleweed? Well, I don't know. You think that yarn she told Jim about her grandpa is on the level? Oh, I'm sure it is. After all, she has a silver arrow exactly like the first one Jimmy found, with the same rhyme engraved on it. And you think her grandpa sent it to her? Where'd he get it? Hmm, probably had a lot of them. What do you mean, Mr. Kent? Well, I don't want Mary to know this, but it's been my feeling ever since I heard her story that her grandfather, Bart Cummings, was the silver arrow himself. No kidding, Mr. Kent. Hey, quiet, Jim. I may be wrong, but everything points to that. You remember the story Hopeful told us about the Silver Arrow? How he was supposed to have been a Western bad man who reformed? Well, that fits the description, doesn't it? Well, it does in a way, well, but... As I say, it's just a hunch I have. However, I think we'll find out much more if Hopeful recovers. He knows who the bearded man is, the man who attacked Jimmy. He'll probably be able to tell us where to find him. What if Hopeful doesn't recover, Mr. Kent? Well, in that case, we'll just have to carry on without his help. As a matter of fact, tomorrow morning we should follow the instructions engraved on that last arrow we found and see where it brings us. Well, let's turn in. I wish you'd let me sleep on the sofa, Tumbleweed. Yeah, nothing doing. Well, all right. Look in on Hopeful, though. If he becomes restless, give him one of the pills Dr. Mallory left. They're on the table next to the bed. Good night, Tumbleweed. Good night. Good night, Jim. Good night. Stripping off his boots, Tumbleweed tiptoes to the door of Hopeful's bedroom, looks in, and then stretches himself out on the horsehair sofa. Only the ticking of a clock breaks the dark silence. Slowly, the hour hand circles the face again and again. 
until the first gray streaks of dawn fan out across the horizon. Off in the distance, a cock crows. The black shadows of night vanish, and the sun comes up like a ball of living fire rising higher and higher in the heavens. A short distance from the entrance to the cave of the Buffalo Bones, Kent, Jimmy, Tumbleweed, and Mary Lewis wilt in its blistering heat as they try to unravel the clue written on the third silver arrow. I give up. There ain't no place, nowhere, but that there boiling sun don't shine. Now, take it easy, Tumbleweed. Let's study the inscription on that arrow again. You got it, Jimmy. Read it once more. Okay. Pay seven to the south and six to the east. Shoot this arrow where the sun shines least. I've done all the facing I'm going to do, Mr. Kent. The sun don't shine least, no place. And that's the whole of it. I'm afraid Tumbleweed's right. The only place this blazing sun doesn't shine is inside that cave. But Mary, you've got it. What's she got? Sunstroke? Oh, we're just stupid, that's all. Why didn't one of us think of that before? Think of what? The cave. The sun doesn't shine in there at all. Well, I'll be hogtied. Gosh, do you think... Now, wait, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where's that spot we marked after we paced off the seven and six? Right here. Yeah. Well, I've been standing on it for an hour looking for some place to shoot this consign silver arrow. Well, you'll get a chance now. Can you see the entrance to the cave from where you're standing? Huh? No, no. I reckon that kind of messes up the idea. No, it doesn't. Can't you see any of the entrance? Well, just a slit kind of over to the left there. Well, shoot the arrow through that slit. Shucks, it ain't no wider than a man's finger. Shoot the arrow through. Well, no hombre can get hung for trying. Stand back. You did it, Tumbleweed, right through. Now, let's see what happened. Come on. Well, it seems awful silly to me. Like playing Paul again. Here's the arrow stuck in the ground just inside the cave. Now, wait a minute. Jimmy, leave it there. It marks the spot. What spot? I don't know, but we'll find out. We've got to dig. For buried treasure? Is that it? Is that what you mean? Ah, look at what you've done, Miss Kent. you got Jim all head up about buried treasure. This ain't pirate country. That old prospector, Hopeful, said there was silver buried somewhere. Pounds and pounds of it. Oh, Hopeful was just babbling, ma'am. Like his panning for gold. Ain't nearly a speck of gold in these parts, but Hopeful keeps right on panning and hoping. Well, we've got this far, Tumbleweed, so we might just as well go a little further. The only problem is, what are we going to dig with? There must be something back in the cave. I'll have a look. You got that flashlight we brung along, Jim? Sure. Here. Thanks. I'll see if I can locate some uh, implements. Okay. Mr. Kent, do you really think this is the treasure spot? I don't know, Jimmy. Gosh. What do we do if we find millions of dollars worth of silver? <laughs> we'll decide that after we find it. Tumbleweed! Yes? Yeah. Anything doing? No, yes. Hey! Tumbleweed, what happened? Tumbleweed! Something's wrong. You two stay here. I'll be right back. Tumbleweed! All right, Tumbleweed! Hey, I'm here, Mr. Skin. You watch that hole. I, I get clean to it. What hole? Oh, I see it. Hey, reach your hand up. Hey, some, some hombre's been living down here. He's got a cook stove and grub and... Well, I'll be a ring tail tight. What's the matter? There's a mess of them silver arrows down here. What? About 50. Here. Here, give me a hand. I'm coming up. Run out of bed. Okay, I got you. Up. Hey, look at them arrows. Well, you can't look on a of it's dark, but come on out and run. Okay. What happened, Tumbleweed? You're all covered with dirt. Oh, that ain't nothing. Look at what I found. Silver arrows. Lots of them. Did you say someone was living under this cave, Tumbleweed? Yep, cook stove, grub, and everything. And I reckon it's that bearded hombre what shot a silver arrow into old hopeful. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. Didn't see any shovels or pickaxes down there, did you? No, nary one. Oh, Mr. Kent, yeah? I know where there's a pickaxe. An old rusty one, but it might do. Where, Jim? Oh, I saw it in the front room of the old hotel yesterday. Mary and I can go up and get it. All right, go ahead. Come on, Mary. If you see our bearded friend, yell. Oh, don't worry, I will. And loud. Gosh, Mary... Wouldn't it be great if we found that silver? Lots of it? Yes, it would. What would you do with it, Jimmy? Mm, I don't know. Give it to a hospital or to some place for poor kids. I don't know. You're sweet, Jimmy. Oh, heck. That's what anybody would do. I wonder. Is that building up ahead of the hotel? Uh-huh. I think the pickaxe was in the front room in a corner. I'm sure I saw it. Oh, watch those steps. Cobwebs all over my face. They're awful, aren't they? Give you the creeps. Oh, there's the pickaxe. I'll get it. Rusty, but still good. Well, let's go. Jimmy. What's the matter? The white as a sheet. Jimmy. Look at this old faded picture on the wall. Over there. It's a picture of a man. What's so strange about it? Jimmy. Look at it. Keep looking. The eyes are moving. Well, how would you like to be in Jimmy's place now? 
staring at an old faded picture hanging on the wall of a ghost town shack, watching the picture's eyes move. Something is going to happen, and happen soon. Will it solve the mystery of Dead Man's Gulch? The next episode winds up the story with an exciting climax, so be on hand to listen in with Superman. Don't forget, tune in again for the next thrilling episode with Superman. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Yes, it's Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, who can leap tall buildings at a single bound, race a speeding bullet to its target, bend steel in his bare hands, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. But before we join Superman, listen. And now to our story. Shot in the back with a silver arrow by Jimmy Olsen's unknown assailant, as he was about to reveal the identity of the man whom he had been hiding in the ghost town, hopeful Jake, the aged prospector, has rushed back to Tumbleweed's ranch unconscious. The following day, Clark Kent, together with Jimmy, Tumbleweed, and Mary Lewis, went back to Dead Man's Gulch to help Mary find the fortune hidden there by her grandfather, the legendary Western Robin Hood known as the Silver Arrow. Their final clue led them to a place called the Cave of the Buffalo Bones, where Kent and Tumbleweed are now searching for the treasure. Meanwhile, in the weather-beaten building that was once a hotel, Jimmy and Mary saw a dust-covered portrait behind the sagging bar. And as they looked at it, the eyes and the painted face began to move. Mary became hysterical, and Jimmy escorted her back to the ranch. We join them now as they talk, while waiting for the doctor to report on Hopeful's condition. Listen. I guess you feel mighty proud that your grandfather was the Silver Arrow after hearing about all the swell things he did for people out here. I am proud of him, Jimmy. She was, Mary. Wasn't it a lucky thing you found that letter in your mother's trunk? Now maybe you'll be a millionaire, or is it millionaire? <laughs> I don't know that I'll be either one. After all, we haven't found anything yet, and for all we know, if there ever was a buried fortune, somebody else may have stumbled on it long ago. Oh, gosh, that would be awful. Do you think... Dr. Mallory's coming out of Hopeful's room. I sure hope he's got good news. How is he, Doctor? Will he live? Yes, I'm sure he will. Oh, thank heaven. May, may we go up to see him now, Doctor? Mm, I think so, but please don't stay long and don't let him talk much. It'll tire him. No, we'll just stay a few minutes. Come on, Mary. Oh, goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye, oh, goodbye Dr. Jimmy. Mallory. Goodbye, Mary. All right, Mr. Remember what the doctor said about Yeah, me? I won't make him talk. Hello, Hopeful. Uh, howdy, Yearlin. Howdy, Miss Mary. Hello, Hopeful. How do you feel? I feel like I've been skewered and readied for a barbecuing. Yeah, but it takes a lot to kill a McGarrity. That's what I am. Is that your real name? Yep. Jacob Francis McGarrity. That's my full handle. But folks never called me nothing but Hopeful. That's because you're always hoping to find gold, isn't it? Yep. Always hoping to find something what folks say ain't. I think we better leave now, Hopeful. The doctor. No, 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 wait. I got something to tell you. It's something important, especially to you, Miss Mary. Important to me? Yeah. Oh, but it can keep until later. Doctor Mallory yeah, says. I he... don't give a hoot what that old sawbone said. I, I got to get this off my chest now. I've been doing lots of thinking while that angel of death has been trying to make up his mind about me. What's troubling you, Hopeful? Yeah, like I. Told you last night, before I was plugged with that silver air, I've been hiding a man out at Dead Man's Gulch for many years. Yes, you were going to tell us who he is. No, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to that. Oh, I'm sorry. I got to talk kind of slow, because he's got all my natural strength. Well, this here yarn goes back many years, to the days just before the silver vein give out up at Dead Man's Gulch. One night I was a sitting in my shack, eating my supper, when I hear a horse 
coming along slow like. I hear it stop. And then a hombre staggers up to my door, and before he gets to knocking, he, he folds up like an empty green sack. I drag him into the shack. While the wounded hopeful recounts to Jimmy and Mary a story that will reveal the identity of the mysterious inhabitant of the deserted mining town, Kent and Tumbleweed are standing in front of the cave of the buffalo bones near Dead Man's Gulch, trying to solve the riddle of the third silver arrow. Yeah, that's the fourth time I shot an arrow through that dang slit in the rock, and we ain't found nothing yet. That is, nothing but an empty hole in the floor of the cave. I know, Tumbleweed, I know. I can't figure it out. Mr. Kent, are you sure we followed them directions like it says in that poem? Sure we did. It says, face seven to the south. We did that, didn't we? Yeah, that's great. All right, now, then face the east. Well, that's east where you've been shooting, isn't it? Yeah, do we? Maybe it's the last part that's got to stop. You mean about shooting this arrow where the sun shines least? Yeah, sure, you see... Whoever wrote that message neglected to say what time of day to shoot this arrow. Don't get you, Mr. Kent. What you driving at? Well, don't you see, Tumbleweed, the position of the sun keeps changing all day as it goes from east to west. That means it may shine least in different places as the hours go by. Well, I'll be hogtied. I'd have never thunk of that. Does that mean i got to stand here and shoot this consarn silver arrow at different shady spots till sundown? I'm afraid that's the only way we can... Uh, Hey, what was that? Sounds like somebody yelling help. Well, there it is again, coming from the town. That sounds like Jimmy. Come on. How can it be Jimmy? He's back at the ranch with me. Well, he's supposed to be there, but that's his voice. He must have come back for some reason. He stopped yelling. Something's happened to him. Come on. Came from in here. Oh, it is Jimmy. Take your hands off that boy. Why, you old hombre choking the lad. I said take your hands off. There. Stand back to me while I teach this man a lesson. No, Here, let no go way. Of me. Let go, Consigne. Why? That must be the fella that tried to beat up Jimmy last night. Yes. Who are you? What are you doing here? It's none of your business. Get out of here and let me alone. I, I don't like snoopers. You're all a snooping to something. Tell us who you are or we'll turn you... Wait, Mr. Kent, don't do anything. I know who he is. Oh, well, nobody know who I am. I don't believe nothing nobody says. Just go away and let me alone. Jimmy. How do you know who this man is? Who told you? That's what I came here to tell you. What do you mean? I was looking for you and Tumbleweed in here when he came in and grabbed me before I could say anything to him. I don't believe nobody. Go away. Let me alone. I don't... He, uh... He fainted. Yes. Poor old fella. Too much excitement, I guess. Well, I'll put him down here. There we are. Shall I go get some water? No, I don't think so. I think he'll need any, Jimmy. He's coming around all right. Jimmy, tell us who this hombre is before I bust wide open. Oh, well, his name is Bart Cummings. Bart Cummings? Why, isn't that the name of Mary's grandfather? That's who this man is, Mr. Kent. What? Then he, he's the Silver Arrow? Why, that can't be possible. The Silver Arrow died long ago. Mary said they hadn't heard from him since long before she was born. Where'd you get this information, Jimmy? Hopeful told Mary and me about it less than an hour ago. He told how this man came to him one day, half dead from bullet wounds, how he nursed him back to health. Then what's he doing here, and why is he acting crazy like? Well, Hopeful says Mr. Cummings sort of lost his mind after his accident and couldn't remember where he'd buried his fortune. But he did remember that he had a fortune somewhere. Yes, so Hopeful, hoping the Silver Arrow would someday find all that money, kept him hidden out here where he spent all his time searching. And that's why old Hopeful got so darn rambunctious when we come out here to look for Silver Arrows. That's it. We've got what he's looking for. The silver arrows that point to his buried treasure. Silver. Uh, here. Where am I? Who are you? We're your friends, Mr. Cummings. We're going to help you find your treasure. Help me? Uh, how can you help me? As soon as you've had a rest, we'll show you the three silver arrows you set out long ago to help locate your treasure. Then we'll help you find it. You can show the rest. Well, here's my new car, motor running and ready to go. Uh, get in, Mr. Cummings. Tumbleweed, I don't exactly know how to thank you for taking care of my granddaughter, Mary, and for everything else you've done. I can't tell you how grateful I am, too. Oh, that's okay, Silver Arrow, Mr. Cummings and uh, Miss Mary, but don't thank me. 
Mr. Kent, Jimmy, and Hopeful have done everything for you. Oh, Hopeful is the only one who really did a lot for Mr. Cummings. You don't thank me plenty. That bag full of silver dollars ain't exactly no horse fodder. <laughs> you certainly look elegant all decked out in your new mail-order clothes. Mm-hmm. Sure do look prosperous, too. Uh, you reckon it do, sure enough? Uh-huh. Certainly do. Ain't no use saying no more now. I reckon I can't never say enough to show you all how I feel inside. Oh, it's on nothing at all. We had us lots of fun of doing what we did. Hey, Jimmy? Huh? Oh, yes. Why, Jimmy, what's the matter? Haven't you got anything to say even about Tumbleweed's new car? Yeah, Jim. Ain't you going to say nothing about being the first to ride in it? Oh, sure. Yeah, it's swell. I'm afraid Jimmy feels pretty bad about leaving here. But no more than I do, believe me. Why? I know, Jim, lad. Can't none of you feel no worse than me, but you'll be coming back soon again, I hope. Well, it's getting late, Tumbleweed. Better get going if we don't want to miss that train. Reckon you're right, Mr. Kent. Come on, Hopeful. Get aboard. No, no, I ain't going. Hey, Hopeful, ain't you going to come and see me off? Or going to kind of miss you, you ordinary old coyote. You no, know, no, I can't go. Got work to do. Work? What kind of work? Why, you can't do anything in those shiny new clothes. I sure can. I got to go back to panning for gold in the creek. You can't never tell when I'll strike a bonanza. But you know nobody's never found no gold there. Well, that ain't nothing. I can keep on panning and hoping, can't I? <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. And so, with hopeful Jake returning to his hoping and panning, the mystery of the silver arrow is cleared up. Mary takes her aged grandfather, who has recovered his sanity as well as his fortune, to live with her in the East, as Jimmy and Kent return to the Daily Planet, where another, even more thrilling adventure awaits them. Don't fail to tune in again to hear the start of a new, exciting story with Superman! Don't forget... Tune in again for the next thrilling episode with Superman. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine.